Good morning, New Beginnings Church of Life family. We're so glad that you're here. Now, let's prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to worship Jesus together. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here again today. I hope you had a great week. Uh, weather's been sort of crazy, uh, but warmer weather is coming, so uh, look forward to that. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I have touched on before, but in a different light, in a different manner, and, and that's on love and forgiveness. And I have entitled this message, I believe I'm going to entitle it, Have We Learned How? to love yet. Have we learned how to love yet? And so let's just bow our heads in prayer and ask God's blessing upon the word. Father, right now we come to you and we ask for your blessing upon this word. I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, Lord, and teach us your word. Break it open today and help us to understand what you're trying to say to our hearts, Father. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, your anointing to be upon this word and your anointing to be upon my lips, Lord, as I share. And let no devil try to hinder it right now in the name of Jesus. Let it go forth and speak to hearts to those that you already destined it to speak to in the name of Jesus. And everyone said with me, amen. Amen. No. when we look at Christianity and the gospel of Jesus Christ in its totality, it's really all about forgiveness, isn't it? It really is. You know, as a matter of fact, forgiveness is probably one of the greatest pillars or foundation stones uh, in Christianity. It, it's one of the great things that are there. But if we look at the core of Christianity, the core of Christianity is love. And we find that in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that what? He gave his only begotten son. And, uh, and, and again, it goes on. So we see that that is the core. Love is the core. And because God so loved the world so much, he chose to forgive us. He loved us so that he chose to forgive us. And that's why he sent his son to die for us. Because he chose to forgive us. Because he loves us so. So love and forgiveness. I want you to really get this in your mind. Love and forgiveness actually walk hand in hand. And are very much intertwined. Now here let me throw something else in here now. Now he loved us so that he chose to forgive us. And that's why he sent his son. But he sent his son even while we were yet sinners. And that's found in Romans 5.8. And uh so, he loved us so much that he chose to forgive us, and that's why he sent his son. And he sent his son even while we were yet sinners. And it really, in that state, we were considered enemy to, enemies towards God. And, um, and yet, God loved us so much that he chose to forgive us, sent his son to die for us, even while we we're in that state as enemies towards God. Isn't that something? Really, if you really think about it, you know, isn't that quite the thing that while we were basically enemies with God, the Father sent His Son, Jesus, to die for us because He loved us so much that He wanted to show us forgiveness. Now, 
After saying all this and knowing all this, why do we as Christians, people of God, why do we as Christians have such a hard time to forgive others that have done us wrong? When we know that God is such a forgiving God, and he went to such great lengths to forgive us. Why do we struggle so much to forgive others? And we do. We do at times. You know, it's one thing to struggle with an unbeliever that may have done us wrong. You know, but it's a whole nother thing at times when we struggle with believers that have done us wrong. Sometimes that has been the greater struggle when we struggle with a brother and sister that may have done us wrong. And why is that? Well, some may feel, well, they should have known better. And absolutely, absolutely they should have known better. But perhaps there have been some kind of character problems in their lives. Perhaps they're carrying hurts and wounds from being hurt from somebody else. Perhaps even another believer. you got to understand something here, people of God. When we carry hurts and wounds and they have never been healed, we are considered hurting people. And when we carry those things around, hurting people will hurt other people. And that's why it is paramount. It is paramount that if we have hurts and wounds by others, we need to be healed. And I will talk about that a little bit later in this message. So, you know, Jesus talked about enemies too. Well, you know, God sent his son, Jesus. Well, you know, to he chose a lot. He loved us and he chose to forgive us. And he sent his son, uh, even while we were yet sinners, you know, and, and 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 we're considered enemies towards God. Jesus went as far as, you know, he talked about enemies too. And he went as far as saying that we need to love our enemies. Didn't God do that? Really, think, think of the connection here. Didn't God do that? While we were yet sinners, we were enemies with him. Yet he loved us so much, he chose to forgive us. And he sent his son, even while we were yet sinners enemies with him to show us forgiveness he did that and he he loved us through sending his son and jesus went as far as is is talking about how we need to love our enemies in matthew 5 43 to 48 in the new king james it says this it says you have heard and jesus and jesus is talking here you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, apparently this was a teaching of the Old Testament. But when Jesus came in, he turned that all around. Because remember, he was sent while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies with God. It's no wonder he turned that around. Think about this. God loved us so much that, you know, he chose to forgive us while we were yet enemies with him. And so he says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Now listen to this. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Didn't God do the same when he sent his son? Do good to those who hate you. Didn't God do the same when he sent his son? Think about it. And pray for those who spitefully use you. And persecute you. Didn't God do the same? And didn't Christ even do the same in how he was treated while he went to the cross? God knows how to love his enemies. And he wants us to begin to learn how to love our enemies. He wants us to love our enemies. Let's go on. Verse 45. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good. He makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, and sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you? Uh, uh, and excuse me. If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect. You shall 
be perfect. This is not an option. You shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And I'll talk to you what that word perfect means in just a moment. Now, first of all, first off, let me specify to you what qualifies uh, as an enemy. Number one, an enemy is anyone who curses us with their words. They curse us. They say bad words against us. They tear us down. You know, they try to tear our characters down. It's, it's a word thing. So number one, an enemy, uh, an enemy is one who curses us. They say bad words concerning us. An enemy is one that hates us or is jealous of, of us for no reason at all. Do you ever have anyone hate you and jealous of you for no reason at all? Do you ever have someone curse you and try to tear your character down with their words? I'm sure we all have had that happen to us. And then thirdly, an enemy is one who spitefully uses us. They spitefully uses us, use us, uh, uses us, the, uh, and it's those that try to hurt or injure us in any possible uh, way or fashion. They try to hurt us in any way. Uh, they don't have our good in mind. You know, they're always trying to get us in trouble. They persecute us. Did you ever have anyone persecute you? Well, that's an enemy. Okay. So, you know, one may think, you know, if you really think about this, one may think that only unbelievers would qualify in these categories. But that's not so. Because I don't know about you, but I have seen believers qualify in these areas where believers have cursed other, even cursed other believers with their words and trying to tear, tear their uh, other people down and tear their characters down. They've used their words. At times, uh, uh, believers have hated, uh, uh, hated their brothers and sisters for no reason at all, or they were jealous over them for some reason. And even believers have, at times, spitefully used other uh, believers, trying to get them in trouble, trying to ruin them for some reason. You know, and this all qualifies as enemies. It's sad but true, but believers with real character problems can act this way towards other believers and people in general. And it's probably because they have been wounded or hurt themselves. Does that make it right? No. It doesn't make it right. Do they need to get it right? Yes, they need to get it right. Uh, but yet, how are we to react to this type of conduct that comes from not only unbelievers, but even worse, a believer. How are we supposed to act towards a brother and sister in Christ that's treating us this way? Are we to retaliate, retaliate and fight fire with fire? Are we to give them a good, you know, knock to the nugget like they tried with us? Uh, you know, I'm sure at times we like to. But that's not how we love our enemies. We are to love, at times, this type of people. You know, we might hate their conduct. We may not like how they act. But we can still do good and pray for the person. We have to sometimes look past the conduct, people of God. And I know it's hard, and I know it's not easy. But we have to look past the conduct. Didn't God look past our conduct while we were still enemies with him when he sent his son to die on the cross for us? Didn't he look past the conduct of how, how they treated him? And Jesus, here he's hanging on the cross, and he says one of the first words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He looked past the conduct. His love kicked in and with love, forgiveness walked hand in hand with him and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we are to love our enemies as hard as may be. You know, in so doing, as we love our enemies, it will heap conviction, coals of fire, conviction upon them. And hopefully when they feel that conviction, because we're not retaliating like they are, we, we're not retaliating, uh, retaliating and acting like they are. And when they see that, you know, they're going to be ashamed. 
and embarrassed of their conduct and how they've been treating. And hopefully they, when they see that and feel that, they'll repent and learn from their mistakes, hopefully. You know, do we have to be rug mats for people like this? No, we don't have to. Sometimes there's situations that we can't help it. You know, we may have a coworker or we may have a boss, you know, that we can't always get out of. But do we have to be rug mats? Not if we don't have to be. We don't have to be rug mats. Uh, but we are still not to hate them. We're still not to curse them like they curse us. We're still not to hate them like they hate us. And we're still not to cur persecute them like they persecute us. That's not how we love our enemies. We are to do good and pray for them as the Lord says. And hopefully in the end that will turn things around. You know, it says that God makes the sun rise on the good and the evil. And then he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He still does good to those that don't deserve it. And if we're going to be children of the Most High God, and if we're going to be perfect like he is perfect, then we're going to do good too, and we're going to love our enemies and do good for them and pray for them if need be. You know, in Matthew 5, 46, in the Passion Translation, and 47, it says this. It says, What reward do you deserve if you only love the lovable? Don't even the tax collectors do that. How are you any different from others if you limit your kindness only to your friends? Think about that. Don't even the ungodly do that. Are we going to be different? Are we going to be different and act differently when we're treated in ways that we don't like? You know, people of God, we are called to love the unlovable. We are called to love the unlovable. And it's not just those that may look different from us and may smell different from us. Those are not just the unlovable. The unlovable are those that are gruff. The unlovable are those that curse. The unlovable are those that hate. And the unlovable are those that persecute. We are called to love the unlovable. And that is not always easy. You know, it's natural to want to retaliate against those that have mistreated us. You know, it's not easy to hold back. There's times that people have said and done things to me that I had all I could do to hold back and not just give it to them both barrels. And uh, But I did, by the grace of God. <laughs> but the Lord says this, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And when we hold back and we end up doing good to those that that and pray for those and you know that have done us wrong, the Lord says, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay." Will repay. Our job, people of God, is to love. You know, and someone said, "Well, you know, Pastor Jim, but." You don't understand. You you don't understand how so and so has hurt me. I do understand. We have all have hurts. Maybe some more have had more severe than others. I do understand. But let me say this to you. Let me say this to you, and I, and I may get into that a little more. If we are ever going to get over that hurt, we need to love. And with love, what goes hand in hand in that is forgiveness. We need to love and forgive. Our job is to love. So, again, does this mean we have to forgive those that curse, hate, and spitefully use us? What do you think? Absolutely, yes. If we're going to truly love a person, we need to forgive them if we're going to truly love them. No, we have to love, again, we have to understand that love and forgiveness uh, are intertwined. They go hand in hand. We can't truly love someone unless we do forgive them. If you really say, I love so-and-so, yet we're holding out in our heart, we're not loving them. We can't love and, and still hold on forgiveness together. That's not how we love somebody. To hold on forgiveness towards a person is to hold hate and anger towards them. That's why I said you can't both love a person and hold on forgiveness towards them. You can't. 
because unforgiveness is comprised of hate and, and anger, and that's the opposite of love. You know, this is the way God loved us while we were yet sinners. He loved us, and He chose to forgive us. He loved us to the point He chose to forgive us before we even asked, and He sent His Son. We didn't ask Him to send His Son. He chose to forgive us before we even asked, and He sent His Son. And we got to understand, people of God, that forgiveness is not really an option. If we go to Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 12, and this has to do with the Lord's Prayer. It should be called the Disciples' Prayer because he's teaching the disciples how to pray. He says this, and Jesus is speaking here, says, in this manner, in this manner, therefore pray our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and here it is in verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, forgive us our wrongdoings as we forgive those have, that have done the same thing against us. That's what it's saying. Forgive us. And Jesus is teaching this. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As we forgive, Lord, please forgive us. And he will. You know, forgiveness, I have to say this to you. And I think I shared this in another message I've, I've preached in the past. Forgiveness is the healing salve that heals the wounds of others that others commit against us. In our hearts. Forgiveness is a healing sad people of God. And as we forgive, that's what heals the wounds and the hurts that others have done to us. And so when we hold on forgiveness, we're really just hurting ourselves. We don't even realize that. And as we forgive, it's like breaking off the chains of what others have done to us. We're forgiving that person. And it begins to heal the wounds and the hurts that that person has caused in our lives. That's why it's so important to forgive. No matter how big the offense was, we still need to forgive. Because if not, we're going to be wounded and hurt. And that wound can fester and get infected. And a root of bitterness can come up and that can defile us to the point where we're now we're hurting people and wherever we go many times we will hurt others and the wounds and the hurts just keep going on and that's why forgiveness is such an importance in our Christian lives why do you think it's such a great pillar great foundation stone and walks hand in hand with love it's intertwined with love because as we forgive it will break the chains of offenses and it will begin to heal the wounds in our hearts. And people that refuse, they refuse to let go of, of unforgiveness, they're hurting themselves and they become bitter and then many times they hurt others in the process. So we need to let go of unforgiveness or we'll just get worse. We won't get better. I remember a time when I was very hurt in my life and Pastor Mary Louise Adlin uh, was, uh, you know, in my life at that point. And I came to a point where, you know, I would I would talk about this and, you know, and just moan and groan over and cry over whatever it was. And, and it came to a point finally she said to me, Jim, you either got to get bitter or you either got to get better or you're going to get bitter. Either get better or get bitter. And that's what she told me. Because if I kept going on with that stuff and I didn't forgive the person that hurt me, I wasn't going to get any better. So from that point on, let me tell you something. I respected that woman of God. And when she said that to me, I took it to heart and I chose to forgive. And in the end, I got better. And let me tell you something. If I didn't get better, I wouldn't be standing right here now preaching this word to you. I had to get better or I would have been a wounded bitter person going around hurting others the way that person hurt me 
when I was wounded. And please, people, God, we don't want to be like that. We need the healing salve of forgiveness to rub in that ointment in our wounds so we can finally heal from those great offenses that others have done to us. We need to get better, not bitter. Forgiveness releases the trespasser from us so we can be healed. It doesn't mean they're off the hook. doesn't mean God still won't deal with them, but it releases them from us. They're not constantly uh, wound around our necks any longer, chained with us. You know, we're reliving that story over and over again. It's time to let it go, release them, and get better, not bitter. Amen? You know, the Believer's Bible commentary says this about, um, you know, forgiving our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, please forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. It says this in uh, the commentary. It says, and forgive, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This does not refer to judicial forgiveness from the penalty of sin, that forgiveness is obtained by faith in the Son of God. Rather, this refers to the parental forgiveness that is necessary if fellowship with our Father is to be maintained. If, if believers are unwilling to forgive those who wrong them, how can they expect to be in fellowship with their Father who has freely forgiven them for their wrongdoing? As God forgives us and as we know that God forgives us, so should we forgive those who have wronged us. And in so doing, we maintain a right fellowship with the Father. And we can expect him to forgive us when we forgive. But if we hold on to those offenses and we're unwilling to forgive, how can we expect him to forgive us? You see, forgiveness is not an option. It's something we need to do if we want to carry on and maintain that fellowship with our Father in heaven. We need to forgive. Uh, <clears throat> you know... If we truly want to have a Christ-like character, we will learn to forgive even the ones that are hard to forgive. You know, those, those great offenses. You know, after Jesus finishes off talking about how we are to love our enemies as ourselves and do good to them and pray for them, he says this in Matthew 5.48, and I'm going to read it to you in two different translations. It says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. I'm going to talk to you about that word perfect in a moment. And then in the Passion, it says this. Since you are children of a perfect Father in heaven, you are to be perfect like Him. Understand this. Forgiveness is not an option. We've seen it in the Lord's Prayer. If we want to be forgiven, we will forgive. We've seen it there. Now here Jesus is saying, saying this, therefore you, sh you, therefore you shall be, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And in the Passion, he says, since you are children of a perfect Father in heaven, you are to be perfect like him. It's not an option. We need to be perfect like him when it comes to loving our enemies. And how do we love our enemies? By forgiving them and doing just the opposite of what they would do to us. You see, the word perfect in the Greek means complete in moral and mental character. It's the same as I cited when Paul was talking about pressing towards the mark of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. What was that mark? What that was that pressing towards that mark? What was that high calling? It was having the character of Jesus Christ formed in him. That was what he was pressing for. That was the high calling for him. And it is what was coming it was becoming complete and having that character formed in him. It means taking on the nature and character of Christ. We are to be complete or perfect when it comes to our enemies as the Father is. We are to be complete. It doesn't mean to be we have to be perfect. Uh, and again, in the Bible, 
uh, Believer's Commentary, in this verse it says this, Jesus closes this section with this, with the admonition, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. The word perfect must be understood in the light of the context. It does not mean sinless or flawless, the previous, verse, uh, previous verses explain to be perfect means to love those who hate us, to pray for those who persecute us, and to show kindness to both friend and foe. To be perfect like our Father in heaven is perfect when it has to do with loving our enemies is to be exactly like Him. It means to pray for those who persecute us, and to show kindness to both friend and foe, and uh, and it means also to love those that hate us. That's what it means to be perfect, as our Father in heaven is perfect. So perfect here is that spiritual maturity which enables a Christian to imitate God in dispensing blessing to everybody without partiality. You know, let me say this to you, people of God, what brought this sermon on. Because I had to live this sermon out many times. I do have to live many sermons out that I preach to you. Don't think I'm just preaching in you and I've never experienced anything. I've had to live this out. And I want to tell you, too, that I've had many hurts. Many, 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 many hurts. If I were to tell you all my hurts, I don't even want to go into all that. But I knew that I had to also forgive those that have hurt me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here today. I would have become bitter and I would have became just like them who hurt me and I would have been hurting others. And I'm sure that you don't want that for your lives. But let me tell you what brought this sermon on. I got word that somebody was in crisis. I won't name the person. And this person was somebody that had hurt me in the past. And so I got word that this person was in crisis and, and, and uh, people of God and New Beginnings, uh, don't try to guess who it is. It's nobody you know. It's nobody you know. I just want you to know that right now. So don't try to guess. It's nobody you know. So in any case, uh, so I got word that this person was in crisis. And, uh, and so what happened was then, you know, after finding out, I had to deal with my own feelings of anger and hurt towards this one because you know he I'll say he it was a gentleman this person you know did things that that hurt me in their words and uh you know and you know maybe been other things too that qualified as an enemy and they were a believer they were a believer and it wasn't the first believer that hurt me but this one did and I found out they were crisis they were in crisis and I had to deal with my feelings of anger and hurt but I also realized that God was confronting me and how I was going to react to us. What would I do? Would I just cut them out and say, you know what? Who cares? I'm not going to do good for them. I'm not going to pray for them. Whatever they got coming to them, they got, you know, whatever they're going through, they got it coming to them. You know? No. I knew God was dealing my heart and also knew that God, that God was also dealing with me about you know Christ being formed in my character and nature in areas that he needed to be formed more and that's what he brought on some of these other sermons where I talked about Paul pressing towards the mark of the high calling and Christ Jesus having Christ formed within his character in his moral and mental character and I know that just this was another way and so I knew God was dealing with me and so I said you know what I want to be perfect as a child of God, as my Father in heaven is perfect. I want to have His nature. I want Christ to be formed in me and that part of my character and my life. And so I forgave that person for what they did. Do I like what they did? Did I like? Do I like the conduct? No. But I still could forgive the person and I did good and I earnestly prayed that God would deliver that person out of that crisis. And I still pray that way, and I pray that healing will come upon this person. It wasn't easy, but I knew by doing this, I was doing the right thing. I knew I was doing the right thing, and God was dealing with my life. And it's good that God deals with our lives, because He's trying to make us more like Him. He's trying to make us more 
Christ-like, where we resemble him more and more. And it felt good. And it felt good. Even doing that, it felt good. And I said, you know what? I really can love my enemy. I can really love those that curse me. I can really love those that hate me. I can really love those that would even persecute me and try to blame me for something that I may not have done. We can do that. And it felt good. It felt good to do that. So the question is this. How about you? Have you been hurt by someone, even a Christian at crisis, confronting you over by the hearing of this message? Is somebody coming to mind as I've been sharing this word with you? Has someone cursed you with their words, shown hate towards you for no reason at all, and or spitefully used you to hurt you in some way or fashion? They are persecuted you. If this message has spoken to you today, the Lord is saying for you to be perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. It means to love those who hate us, to love those, to pray for those who persecute us, and to show kindness to both friend and foe, even to our brothers and sisters in Christ who may have done us wrong. People of God, let us forgive as the Father has always forgiven us. And let's finally let go of those old hurts and wounds so we can be finally healed. Let's love like the Father and so we can be perfect like Him who is in heaven. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for this word today. And Lord, if this word is spoken to your, any of your people out there that have seen and heard this message, and Lord, they say they have an enemy out there and you're speaking for them to forgive, to love and forgive them, maybe and pray and do good for them somehow, Lord, help them to do that. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, help us not to be ones that would hold on forgiveness and then we become bitter to the point where we begin to hurt those like those that have hurt us. This day, Lord, we let go of all hurts and wounds and we forgive all those that have hurt us when they should have even known better, even our brothers and sisters in Christ. We forgive and we let go in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, people of God. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this word. Take it to heart and learn to love and forgive because they are both connected. They both walk hand in hand and they are both intertwined. Love and forgive like God has loved and forgiven us. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to go to NBCOL dash ny.com to connect with us or you can find us on facebook and youtube leave a comment subscribe and follow us we would love to hear from you there are two ways you can partner with us and give you can go old school by making out your check and mailing it to new beginnings church of life 202 east commercial street east rochester new york 14445 or you can go new school and give online at nbcol-ny.com.